Viewer discretion is advised. Good evening and welcome to the Nuda Wrestling Podcast After Dark, where we get into a lot of the wrestling goss, mostly based on Dark Side of the Ring on Hulu, um, and a couple of other things going on in real life, day to day. We just really get into it. Um, so today's episode, we're going to be talking about the one and only Macho Man Randy, Randy Savage and the first lady of the WWF, Miss Elizabeth. I am so excited to get into this because this is once again like another kind of love story vibe like we did a little bit like last yeah, yeah, week yeah yeah um with Tammy and Chris um so I'm really this was like very parallel journeys in my opinion yes like, very much so and I I picked it because uh they but like the Macho Man and Elizabeth are very much the like molds that like Sunny and Chris like used okay uh, you know Which what I mean it, they were the kind of the the like the guinea pig for the formula and it, what what and a, what guinea pigs they what were what guinea pigs they were because this I could not believe the turns they took with this story which we'll get into oh yeah he was again, a yeah intense I, man yes I know nothing about this so if you're new here, I am new to wrestling. I know nothing, mm -hmm. <laughs> know nothing, Jon Snow. And Xavier is my guide through wrestling. So this is me getting like the backstory and the tea for the very first time. So exciting. Right. Um, but speaking of Tammy and Chris, we want to take you back to last week's episode briefly, just for some some tea, some clarifications, because very fortunately, we have amazing listeners who love to give us the tea. Right. And I have to say, love to give a spoiler free tea, because mm -hmm. I think that they really do a good job of like, they do not such, ruining it for you. <laughs> such a good job, which also um, small props, not small props, XL, humongous props to Xavier, who always vets the episodes for me so that I don't get spoilers. So like round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Because I'm dying to watch the Bret Hart episode and Xavier won't let me. No, um, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so uh, thank you for that. But we had an amazing comment on last week's episode, uh, filling in a little bit of the blanks for us because we were talking about um, when Tammy and Chris were in debt from ECW, from accruing hotel debt, um, from booking hotels, flights, all of that. Um, so we got a comment from Ricky Temple, three eight four seven and i'm just gonna read it hi xavier and kelsey just to fill in the blank between chris and sunny leaving ecw and their stint on the independence before tna they were both hired by wcw and worked there through the middle of 2000 vince russo who was working there as the head writer and who had been fond of chris since his time in the wwe when they had both worked there in 1995 6 was instrumental in getting them hired to try and help them pay off the debt that ecw had left them with so that's where they were. I don't remember them talking about them going to WCW Not in the episode. Really. Yeah, I, I feel like it was like they didn't really do anything like nothing of note, I guess, happened to them while they were there. So it yeah. wasn't really kind of like worth a mention that they just happened to make another stop in another promotion uh, before, you know, making their way to like TNA and then all of the tragedy that struck thereafter. Yeah, it wasn't like it was like they were just getting a paycheck, girl, to pay which, off that debt. Which, which, it, it coincidentally is what a lot of people were doing at WCW because WCW oh. was backed by uh, Ted Turner and like TNT, and at the time, uh, like TNT and like Ted Turner was like basically like a conglomerate like it was huge at the time it was like the biggest television broadcasting station so they had just like so much money that they were like giving out all these like uh guaranteed contracts to wrestlers wow. and that's how they ended up getting a lot of like the wwf superstars including uh like uh the macho man randy savage and miss elizabeth is that they had essentially guaranteed contracts and what i mean by that is they were guaranteed to work less dates for more money oh we've talked about this before yeah so that was like kind of the big draw uh with wcw I um get it. so if they were trying to like uh like accrue money to like pay off the debt like that's where you wanted to be because like the people in charge were just spending an exorbitant amount of money to just get the talent that was going to bring eyeballs that they weren't exactly like looking at how that exactly like shook down until the early 2000s like uh the tail end of wcw when mm -hmm. they ended up merging with aol 
and AOL at the time, okay, AOL and Time Time Warner merged, and AOL like then looked at all of their books and they're like, why are Girl. you paying all of these people all of this money and they're not even like on television regularly like it's yeah they Not aol they, sabotaging they, the wrestlers yeah and and the thing is like the wcw was really like it was ted turner's like little baby so once he was kind of uh not the main person in charge as far as like wcw goes once there was a, a separate entity and a separate board that got a say in it they were not like wrestling people like they did not mm. care so if the money wasn't Whack. shaking out like they they weren't going to make excuses for the money not shaking out like they were the bottom line people and they were like no this has got to go so then at like during that like 2001 time period uh is when vince at like because the WWF at that point had pulled ahead so far and was making all of this money was able to purchase both of his competitors in the same year which is insane which is insane right Buy, buying your enemies is crazy yeah well I, he essentially created a monopoly like in the year 2001 like he, he was literally just, a rockefeller but for be, wrestling because the yes there were like independent things happening but none of them had enough money flowing into them that they were ever going to be uh, at like anything to compete with uh the WWF at that time like he basically was just like i and he bought them for like dirt cheap like both of them were like on the verge of like absolutely collapsing so he bought them for uh just way less than they were like worth mainly for their libraries so if you look and now that when we're talking about like if you look at the like the WWE network that we watch everything on, mm -hmm. that has WCW's entire catalog because it was purchased in 2001. It has ECW's no entire way. catalog because it was purchased in 2001. So like Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so like I we watch on the like the regular new to wrestling podcast like Monday Night Raw. Mm -hmm. I in my own free time have been watching WCW Nitro like in the same timeline that we're watching just to be like what's going on where which is amazing uh, but it, it's fascinating that i'm able to do that because he had just purchased all of his competition that is really crazy right that is that's actually insane and such a power move not that i am condoning vince mcmahon's behavior in any way in no, any no 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 no. We, we all know this man like, is like the devil but yes, as but far like, as what the, he did for wrestling we'll give like, him the Chris what he did. Jenner of wrestling. Oh, absolutely. Like the forethought is really crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, the four he was as far as like his whole career was up until like you know the 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 end was predicated on him being kind of like one step ahead as far as like he knew where when uh cable was coming to the forefront. He was like, Oh, we're getting off syndication, we're going on cable. He's like, mm. uh, we're going on uh closed circuit like television or closed circuit like events uh now we're going to pay-per-views he was the first one to do it he was like oh the all of these are like regional little territories oh i'm gonna be a national wrestling company i'm gonna get on national television so like it, he was always kind of one step ahead of his competition and like that's how he managed to like just out finagle all of these people who are like really like in like in the wrestling business people um but they vince has always kind of said this like philosophy where it's like oh like great like you're in the wrestling business like i'm in the entertainment business totally different things He's, wow yeah so it, his that philosophy on wrestling was very different than i love that editors. Um, which is and, insane yeah i mean and we, you can't it they're still around they're still absolutely they're making more money now than they ever have so wild not to get into like modern tea, but you know how like Nicki Minaj and Meg Thee Stallion are beefing right now? Yes, 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 yes. So Nicki Isn't Minaj- is it really like just like one-sided? Yeah, which we don't have to get into this, but I just think, so Nicki said something in her most recent song and it was like, calm down before I buy the masters to your songs, mm. which is, cr I said, I was like, that is a crazy threat, which is basically what Vince McMahon did. It was right. like, like, cause if she buys the rights- to Meg the Stallion songs or her masters. It's like any money Megan ever makes is actually money Nikki's making. Correct. And it's like, which is an insane threat if you really think about it. Right. 
Um, Cause you can't even, you don't even want to promote your own music at that point. Like that's wild. Right. So, but it's like essentially what happened. Cause now he's making money off of those. Right. Like, like ECW and WC, right. He bought WCW and ECW. And ECW yep. And you're watching that. Like that is really, I mean, yeah. shady and, and, and like diabolical. And it, it was so smart. And like, the thing is like, up the wwe network is fairly new it's in the last like i want to say like seven eight years so like he was just sitting on all of that content oh god the foresight the absolute foresight to just be like and like granted like he would use them in like documentaries that he would make about wrestlers who were now in the wwf who had history in both uh, or like history at ecw or wcw and they he would pull matches or whatever from those archives but to just be sitting on just massive amounts of content like that and just know and just having the business foresight to be like that's going to be worth something someday um more so than it was you know in the moment uh is is just it's smart like a he is satan but he got he fumbled his own bag by being a sicko by being no. a sick oh one hundred percent he yes. fumbled his own bag yes uh, um, speaking of if we want to do a little update on oh that yeah from last oh my god week, heck yeah um so we haven't got we are still very much in the preliminary stages of all of this uh, the only real update is that John Laurinaitis who is the other uh, executive named in the lawsuit. Uh, has now come out and made a statement with his lawyer, essentially that he is also a victim of Vince McMahon's uh, kind of like power games and whatnot. Um, I will say it is, I'll I'll give him this. In the lawsuit itself, it is uh, mentioned that he, that Vince was willing to get uh, John Lauren is like involved in the situation, uh, but Vince wanted to be privy to all of the conversations between uh, Janelle and John Laurinaitis. Like they, he was cool with them, like chit chatting, but he had to be like in the know. Like that's mm. how much of a control thing he had to have going on. So mm-hmm. I will say, like, do I do I necessarily believe him? I don't know. But it is not unfathomable to believe that he, like, he being Vince McMahon, just got off on control so much that, like, it didn't really matter, you know, what players were involved. You know what I mean? Right. There could have definitely been some influence. Correct. And he could have, again, like, it could have been a drink the Kool-Aid thing, the worst, most horrible Kool-Aid ever. But it's like, if, if he's overseeing, like, all of your interactions with this person, like are you making like hyping it up as horribly as possible do you know what i'm trying to say like you kind of get like caught up in the moment and again not that i'm saying like that's an excuse or condoning it but like there could have been such an influence there that like right i'm not i don't know my thing is also it's like she probably also has all of those text messages so i we will find out you know like those weren't necessarily like uh expressly like you know pictured in the lawsuit a lot mm-hmm. those were all from vince mcmahon but like it it's clearly alluded to in the lawsuit that they were also having ongoing conversations about what was going on so it's we'll see how that goes but he in the statement he just basically goes like we look forward to our day in court when we can um like when we are able to like defend ourselves when the truth comes to light yeah right i if I were Vince McMahon's lawyer like I'm feeling like a throwing under the bus is coming like throwing the little the smaller fish in the fryer like I feel like there's going to be some really shady I don't think he's got a leg to stand on oh no I don't think so either I don't think so either I don't think he's gonna get away I like I truly believe like this man believed that he was just untouchable and especially untouchable in his little world Mm. because he has just been made to be king of his little world and Mm. he fully believed that he could just do whatever in this space and i think he kind of lost sight of the fact that there is a real life 
with real laws and real, real consequences, consequences outside period. of this world that you've created where you have to okay everything everything goes through you you hire everybody every you are a, you are the head honcho mm-hmm. in i think that he has just been in that kind of just cyclical just thought pattern for so long that he fully believed that like he was just not able to catch consequences and Which you know is what insane that's not the age we live in anymore which has just been proved over and over and, over, and again. over again the court of public opinion is loud is loud and it's everywhere and granted you know sometimes does it go a little over the top sure but when they know they got somebody mm. the court of public opinion does not it's, let up no and it's final your judgment is final final like without a doubt I was gonna say that too I feel like he's also just and again not an excuse not a a dismissive dismissal of the behavior but he's like so old like he's older and I feel like it's like he didn't know screenshots existed like how are you sending foul foul garbage like that text message and And, not expecting just screenshots uh, like what well that's the thing is like you he fully just believed he, he was yeah that he fully believed no one would dare you know like <laughs> so crazy and oh and another little tidbit uh that I I, tidbits. that that came out is that two tidbits so john laurinitis in is like the executive named in the lawsuit mm-hmm. is married <gasps> to I don't know if you know the Bella twins. I do. Their mother. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Girl. Yes. Stop. He is their but... stepfather and he is embroiled in all of this. So that's another like little twofer, like just happening oh. on the side. Oh and it was also uh, mentioned that. Vince McMahon, the NDA that he had this woman sign, he did not run past the board of directors or anything. Therefore, I did hear about it's this. Probably not even enforceable. Like, so, so, which is so quick. Boy, get your paperwork right. Like, what is wrong with but you? How, how? Could, how could you run that past the board? How no, it's so you? true. No, I was it's like, oh, so hey, true. like, hey, guys, like, do you guys mind like approving this? Like I've clearly just like absolutely been assaulting this woman, but like, like, yeah. Do you not... mind if you approve blatant abuse and silencing that person? Sounds like, great. yeah, of, of course. Like so, but that is. I'm waiting. Literally I'm just waiting insane. for this like to go to trial because it's going to be absolute insanity. Yeah. It's going to be a circus and it's going to be so crazy and i do i feel sorry for her in so many ways and not in a pity way i'm like not like that i just it sucks when something like this happens period and then Mm -hmm. when it gets made into a circus like this like it it, it, the way it's going to be is going to be so much harder and so like i just hope that she gets everything she deserves like this is honestly so 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 i hope she gets every penny that she is asking for yeah and very grateful that different people are at the helm of the wwe like please um wow that is crazy i know i I love when you give me little tidbits they're my favorite they're a whole meal to me they're a whole (laughs) meal to me we are well fed here well fed but um circling back thank you ricky temple so much for your comment because i love love the fill in the blanks and also before we move on finally to the one and only randy savage and miss elizabeth i do want to say because we talked about him so much last week and we did not remember his name which is a sin so we're here calling ourselves out the brother of chris candido's name is johnny Johnny was the star of that episode and I will stand by it. And I, I felt heinous that we could not remember his name. What a sin. So we are going on record. Johnny Candido. Thank you so much for your service, for your vulnerability, for your story, for everything. God bless. We salute you, sir. And and again, thank you for commenting. And uh, if anything you want to interact with us on, if you have just a random question about 
whatever we're talking about want to fill in some gaps for us or if we're wrong by all means please please tell us please correct us uh we're we're all here to learn so yeah we all here to learn and especially like i love that kind of thing like when we're talking and then someone's like actually this she's married to him I'd be right. like, what? Like, to me, right. it's just more tea. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. offend me. It doesn't, like... No, no, no. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm perfectly see. okay with being wrong. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, please. please <laughs> I, I'm not me. one of those people that's just like, no, 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 no. I, I, I will change my opinion with the advent of new information. That's, a- absolutely. <laughs> that's like, I, we fly, We fly too close to the sun as it is. Please right. tell, bring us down. Right, right, right. Bring right. us down. I, I fully agree. So... Absolutely. Without further ado... Let's get let's into, into it. this episode. I... I know, I knew absolutely nothing about these people. Obviously, you know the name Macho Man Randy Savage. Stop. No oh, way. Yeah. Where did you get those? These were actually a gift from one of um, my uh, coworkers. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure, but it is like straight up. Those like, are amazing. It says Macho Man on the side. You're kidding. It's, yeah. It's if a, you're it, listening on um, like just the podcast, you're not watching the YouTube video, Xavier has literally the most stunning Macho Man Randy Savage glasses on. Thank they you, look thank good you. on you. I'm actually like, you're actually really you look really good at those oh, you're pulling them off like without oh, a doubt thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna take them off now because it's um fully 10 p.m while we're recording this no we are true but... we are doing a true after dark episode today it is mm-hmm. it is late girl um but i knew nothing about either of them except you know you you hear the name randy savage bandied about mm-hmm. so crazy though i knew literally nothing about miss elizabeth nothing never heard of her never seen mm-hmm. her what is cool though is because I don't I don't have Hulu at this time. I'm watching the episodes with other people. So this mm. week I watched with my dad, who I did not know until we started doing the podcast, is was actually a huge wrestling fan when he was a kid. Had no idea. Everybody was um, back then, I swear. I know. It's so crazy. So he was like, I had the biggest crush on Miss Elizabeth. She to me was the most like effervescent, angelic mm-hmm. human being who just like you just could not get enough of her. And so it was cool watching it with him and getting like his perspective. Cause he was like, I mean, at the time she was just like the peak. She was like the pinnacle of like right. feminine beauty of like uh, women, just everything. And, she and, was like that girl. And like, she was, she, it, it was, I, I, I believe in one of my notes, I have like, it just gives very like princess die. Like it <gasps> is, it, it is that kind of like, just like, ethereal like she's just so elegant so beautiful doesn't say a lot but like you know what i mean but like she she just says is like like right it's it's it's, means something and like and her just juxtaposed with like the absolute insanity that is the macho man like it just makes her look even more like demure and like uh, you know what i mean like very like i've never seen she's the first to do it like that role and like do it really really well uh and you can kind of see why that became like the model yeah and um so bruce pritchard who was um a formerly former wrestling executive was no he's still there Oh, he's still there. Oh, I have former. I don't know why. Sorry, see. No, no, no. He's still kicking. Fun facts. Um, so he was. Uh, he's a wrestling executive. He literally said, "I have a a quote," and it was like one of the first things that is like they were the first and they were the best to ever Mm -hmm. do it. Point blank. Period. Right. And it. You can. I mean, the storyline is so crazy. And again, because they were the first, it makes it fresh and like Mm -hmm. just so insane. But even. Me, who's seen, you know, obviously, if you know, like, there's marriages on, like, they have weddings on, like, right. the, like, but they were the first. Like, I just, mm-hmm. it was just, wow. But they truly were, like, Beauty and the Beast. Like. Oh, absolutely. Girl. Absolutely. And, uh, like, they were, li- they were working in the time of, like, very much the, the like, the live your gimmick era. Like, yes. Yeah. This, I thought, was super interesting because we've talked about this on the other podcast where, like, I find it so insane and we even talked about a little last week like blurring the lines of your characters Mm -hmm. and like um i think bruce said it it was like you had to live your gimmick and he lived it 24 7 to the max and his brother who also loved having another brother in Mm -hmm. the show he also so his name was lanny profo he also was like he 
dialed it up to a hundred. Like he was, um, he, it said he dialed it past a hundred with the door broken off the hinges, yeah. like his character, um, which I thought was a, like an amazing description of, again, like it's, it, it paints a picture. Cause again, mm -hmm. I have no idea who this is, or I've never yeah. seen him wrestle. It really painted a picture for me. And I remember them making a point to be like, he loved being like the bad guy. Like he mm -hmm. loved the creativity of being the bad guy. He liked like not having to like just be in that box of like being the goody goody and having to like, you know, answer to the fans in that regard. You know what I mean? Like he got to just that. be unhinged, which and is exactly who he is. Absolutely. And I feel like um, I love that about certain people. Like when we talked about Sunny and she was like, she loved being the villain. Like she mm -hmm. was, she really got into it. Cause like I, if which obviously everyone does when you watch wrestling, if like you try and picture yourself, like who would I be? Would I be a baby face? Would I be here? Right. Whatever. I think I would like low key hate being the villain. I'd be like so upset if people were like, I'm doing like insane moves and people are like booing me. Like I think right, I'd be right, so right. devastated. So like the fact that some people like, I feel like I would love it. it. I you, like oh, a, you absolutely. I would love being absolutely. Villain. Xavier would love being the heel, please. I love uh, it. And you would uh, do such a good job at it. I thank you. I would I love, no I would absolutely love just getting like just cheap heat, like just <laughs> just doing anything I could to just just make people annoyed at me. Like, Girl, any I, heat at all, cheap, right? Rich, all of it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I could see that. And it's amazing that people like have that in them where they're like mm -hmm. yeah boo like as long as you love me as long care. as you react i don't care period and i also loved they had linda balea who is the former wife of hulk hogan married for 25 years they had a no longer together do you remember the reality show that they had once upon i time? do hogan I knows do. best yes which is that was insane. like the last time i've seen her like so i like watching this episode i was like oh my god linda hi <laughs> like... hi girl she's first of all she's fabulous second i love her because she is a real girl's girl Right. Um, like I because I literally wrote at one point, like, and it comes in later, but when she's talking about she's been with Hulk for a while now, and she's been one of the only women on the road with them and whatever. Mm -hmm. And when Elizabeth comes to the WWE, instead of being like, because she could have been like a nasty girl, like I've been here, like she could have been, you know, dismissive, right. like I'm just here with my man, like whatever. And she's like, Someone asked me to do her hair one day, and I was like, finally, I want to get in that dress room. I'm going to talk to right. this girl. I'm going to do her hair. I'm going to do her makeup. We're going to go out. We're going to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. Like, she, like, really took her in and was like, we're going to be best friends now, and that's that. Right. And I was like, I just love when women. I appreciate that. I just and, love when women. And, you know, uh, we'll get into, like, later when she, like, really, like, doesn't, she doesn't divulge from the, like, the friend code. Like, she is. She She's is a baddie. Riot or die. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. I, I really respect it. Absolutely. Um, also, we saw uh the real Razor Ramon, who I've never actually seen. Scott. So Hall? this was iconic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I only know fake Razor that we're watching. Which right is now. hilarious to me. I love that you've never actually seen, seen Razor. Razor Ramon. Scott <laughs> Oliver Hall is Razor Ramon. He is my Razor Ramon. Even just him now in this iteration with the toothpick, the hair, the salt it, and pepper, his attitude. A, it just he is Razor Ramon. He is Razor everything Ramon. that that knockoff wanted to be, but came out looking just a little more Honey. squishy and a little more sad. Period. And I, I was like, like this man, he mm. still has something. He is right. salt and pepper. He is raising a bone girl. Right. But he he said, listen, like I would have banged Randy. He was cool as hell. Right. Which I I, I respect it. I absolutely respect it. Um so th they meet, interestingly enough, at a gym, just kind of Oh, randomly. that's right, that's right. Yes. Um, and this they meet like apparently six months before. The Macho Man makes his WWF debut. So he's already like in the wrestling like world. And she was apparently working as like an announcer and an editor, which is impressive because like this is like the 80s. Like we weren't like editing like I edit. Like mm -mm, mm -mm. no. So like that's pretty impressive. Like she was doing she was doing a lot. Yeah. And I um and they got married before they even went to the WWE, right? Like Oh, they, think, yeah, they were married, like, the whole the whole time. Basically. The whole, yeah, which, 
I they don't mention until later on, but they kept very on the DL. Like they did not tell anybody mm -hmm. that they were actually husband and wife, which is insane. Right. Because I do, I do have just a completely unrelated note that Absolutely. says Vince Speedo photo with like eight <gasps> exclamation <Girl>. points. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, we have to remember that Dark Side of the Ring came out your like a like a decent amount of time ago, actually, like two, uh, three years. Well, ago. Well, especially this one because this is the first. They're the on first. They're about to be on season five, and this is the first episode of season one. Yeah, so, so. this is like literally the beginning. But uh, Linda uh, is going through all of her photos, like looking for pictures of Elizabeth, and like is like, oh, look at that! It's Vince McMahon in a speedo, and I was like, like, oh my god, no, 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 was horrible. Did not. I did not need to see that. I, I just, I like, I had to make note of it because it was just, it took me like so off guard. I was like, wait. Mm -mm. But yeah, so they go to the WWE and they go under this like, this guise of like, they wanted you to hate Randy and right. love Miss Elizabeth. Like, you wanted to like think Randy was the worst person on the earth, but like, you just couldn't help but. Like kind of root for him because you loved Elizabeth so much. Like you had, right. you were mostly rooting for her. It's kind of like what we say, only to a way lesser degree with like Mark Miro and Sable, where it's like right. Sable is the best part of Mark Miro. But the difference is this is Macho Man Randy Savage, who's also an incredible wrestler. Right. Like he gives Stone Cold Absolute Steve Austin legend. vibes, where it's like he's such a villain, but you can't help but love him. Right. But um. So basically, they would do like these like interactions with the macho man and elizabeth on on television where he was basically just like acting as like a like an abusive boyfriend or like a like just you know he was just very like possessive very possessive which is you know a, once again art imitating life uh in that he was a very low like it was he was described as just being like very loyal to the ones that he loves uh and yes. like very protective of the ones that he loves so it was very much like not a stretch for him to do but right like on television they would make it a point to like you know have him like aggressively move her somewhere or like give like if she's interacting with somebody like move her like out of the way or like just you know just be very in control of her which yeah made the fans hate him because it was just like what are you doing and it just yeah. made her look all the more like you know like a damsel in distress yeah she was there was like one part where they're doing a promo and he's like yelling and she's like um sitting there like shining his like championship belt or something mm. and he's like hurry up like he like yells at her and she's like okay randy and she like like right is like shining it harder and like that was like the whole thing it's just like mm -hmm. everything she did like he was just like on her case about it but also he like was obviously enamored and obsessed with her it was like it really was like it gave abusive boyfriend vibes. right but yeah yeah he was just like doing everything in his power to just make sure that he looked like a dirtbag and she looked like untouchable basically yeah so where do we uh from here we get the kind of like art imitating life situation with hulk hogan and the macho man this was okay this was so crazy um i because like i just the way they did this because keep in mind like linda and hulk are married right randy and elizabeth are married mm -hmm. and so they're kind of like i guess sort of enemies that end up being like on the same team they end up like really teaming them up which i think is genius so like hulk yes. and randy savage like the mega powers the mega powers so like randy savage is this like crazy unhinged like the mad bad guy the madness and then the hulk is like the the all-american yeah yes like the the whatever and they team them up which i think is iconic to be honest like i was mm -hmm. like watch that it was it was a promos. big deal back then too like it was not that i was around but it was i remember my father telling me like it was like all anybody talked about like was those Legend two being on shit. Team. yeah legendary like even just seeing the two of them together like it just makes you feel something like right. it, it just it makes you feel like feral it it's mm -hmm. just exciting but then um they start basically as we always say, sowing the seeds of discord. Right, by like, right, right. So Randy Savage had this move. If he won a match, he would take Elizabeth and prop her up on his shoulder and they would like walk around the ring. Like, yeah. They, uh, like they, very, they do like a lap. Very fo uh, quarter uh, quarterback on the football team and mm -hmm. head cheerleader vibes. Like, you know, and do a little lap. 
No, I agree. And when Hulk and Randy started being wrestling as a team, Elizabeth was kind of made to be their manager as like a unit. Right. And there was an incident where they played that Elizabeth was up on Randy's shoulder, but she started to slip. And they literally had Hulk grab her ass and like push her back back up up. and like hold it there for a long time. And Jake the Snake also, which can we talk about Jake Jake the Snake for a second? Yes, please. please, please, I only know Jake the Snake in his like probably the final quarter of his wrestling career, I would guess. Like or the final half. Yeah, yeah, the the later half. The back half of his wrestling career. So I really didn't know much about him. And also like B in the D wrestling in the eighties is if you think wrestling in the nineties is unhinged girl wrestling in the eighties, there was like no rules. So Jake, the snake with the, he was a heel. He was like a number one villain. I didn't realize. And again, this is ignorant of me, but I'm new here. I'm just being vulnerable and honest. I did not realize how huge he was. Jake? Like Jake, the snake was huge oh yeah he was yeah all of these guys were like larger than life because yes when when we talked about like these were the first wrestlers to like the the first like crop of wrestlers to like be on national television like this was like the first time that they weren't just like in a little independent like traveling from like region to region and like oh like you knew this like wrestler if they like went to enough of the popular like regions Mm -hmm. this was like the first crop of like Oh, like I can turn on my TV and see these people every Word. week. So this was like that crop. So like they were huge. Yeah. And they wanted to be remembered. They were right. memorable. So like, which we'll get into more Jake the Snake. But like, so Jake the Snake um, is the one that said like, they had like Randy Savage promos where he, cause they start like, Rand- they make Randy Savage like s- start to suspect like there's a love affair going on between Elizabeth and Hulk right. and like Hulk and Elizabeth are like kind of playing it up where they're like getting flirty and mm-hmm. they're like talking whatever yeah, and Jake I, the Snake is like quote. he goes he goes uh not from Jake the Snake it's from uh one of the Macho Man's like promos he goes like it's like you got lust in your eyes mm-hmm. but, oh, and I was like Ooh. which by the way anytime anyone in this episode did a quote from Randy Savage. You had they to do did the, the voice, you which was to. everybody, everybody. Everybody. Linda, Jake the Snake, Jimmy Hart. Because that's how Bruce. he talked. Because like, that's how he was. Like, and they were like, if you were talking, even his brother, if you were talking about, yeah. about Randy Savage, you were using the voice, <laughs> which I loved. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But Jake the Snake was like, he literally would like pull up the video of Hulk like holding her ass and and like count the seconds and that would be his promo and he'd be like that's five seconds too long or like whatever Mm -hmm. like he was like it was so od Mm -hmm. um and then what was so insane which i guess so it it takes time to build up to this point but oh sorry i got lost no it's okay in my notes elizabeth oh go ahead so i i guess it because i wrote Randy was OD protective of Elizabeth. Real life issues started marrying in ring issues. Okay. So Jake the Snake also says, which I thought was crazy. I would never, let me just say this on the record. I give, I give the women of this time a lot of credit. Jake the Snake says, it's hard to have your wife around those guys. I had my wife along with us for a while. And then I was like, absolutely not. Like, and then, um, Lanny talks about, or the brother, yes, Lanny talks about what they would do, like, the most heinous pranks. And he goes, they literally would use people's suitcases as toilets. Right. No boundaries, just very invasive. You had no privacy. And he was like, you know, Jake the Snake is like, and this is like a husband and wife. Like, we're all part, like, people are partying. They're going crazy. They're pranking each other. They're, like, doing all these horrible things to each other. And they just want to, like, go back to their room and relax as, like, husband and wife. Right. But, like, it's hard to be around those. And there was he was saying, like, the issues on the road that happened between, like, the guy started, like, infiltrating their marriage, especially because Randy was so protective of her. Yeah, he wanted to keep her away from the boys. Like He started, yeah, he started, like, basically locking her up. Like, was right. like, you cannot leave this room. Like, you have to stay here. And so it got very, like. Very controlling. It's very, very. Controlling. very very controlling um and i guess it starts really really taking a toll on her um but so she yeah. a- eventually she asked for a break i think oh so yeah so we have yeah so 
I have a uh, like life imitating art, and then it's uh, I believe Jake and Zank was like, oh, like when that starts happening, that's when you really start getting like messed up. Um, and basically, uh, uh, Elizabeth kind of started getting fed up with just kind of always having to be like somewhere or always being like controlled or always having to be like by Randy. Like she ended up asking for a break and she did get it. So this was the first time like that since the debut of the two of them that they have like macho man hasn't been seen immediately with Elizabeth. Mm. So this is when um the macho man becomes like the macho king. He wins the king of the ring of whatever year that they're on and becomes like the macho king and he gets paired with Sherry who is like she's been paired with everybody. Sherry Which who I wrote sensational Sherry a bunch of question marks because who is this? I have Sherry she's a a manager like obviously. Um she managed uh the Macho Man Randy Savage, she managed Shawn Michaels, notably. Mm. Um before uh he was before he was coming out with like Jose Lothario, it was uh Sherry. Um because yeah, I couldn't it, tell if she was like a wrestler or she, she was, was in- yeah. She was a she, yeah, she was a like a, a female wrestler and then uh she was also like a manager. Word. She did she did both. And that's why they said they made mention that like people loved working with Sherry because she was a wrestler also. So like she could get in there and like it was fine. She knew what she was doing. Yeah, because she oh yeah, because there was clips of her like actually wrestling and they said like she literally could wrestle with the best of them. Like she really could like mm-hmm. take a look yeah. in. And but, um they said like as a like a note, like during that entire time, like there was always this like undercurrent of like, where's Elizabeth? Yes, like so she so he's with Sherry and everyone's like, okay, like cool, but like where is mm-hmm. Elizabeth? Like we want Elizabeth. And she's like, meanwhile, like really taking a break. Um, but also, so there was and I can't remember if this was before she left or after she came back, but I'm assuming it's before she left now that I'm thinking about it, when they have the falling out. The whole thing with Hulk Hogan holding her or carrying her out oh, yeah. from the, the hospital was before she left, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was okay. this was like during that whole like the the mega powers like storyline. Right. It was all of that where like she gets like knocked down during um uh like one of the matches and Hulk just like carries her like dead body like to the back or, like brings her to like the hospital and he's like and he's crying like, by her bedside her. and like meanwhile like her actual husband is like in the ring alone because his tag team partner is like attending to his wife like it's chaotic. it's really crazy crazy and again that's why i'm saying like remember that like hulk hogan's also married like to somebody else right. and i get it like he's a character or whatever but it's like it's so crazy that at this time like people are literally rooting or like the like I don't remember who was talking about it, but it's like people literally wanted to see her leave Randy for Hulk Hogan right. because like he was the one who was like supporting her. He was like tender with her. He right. was like soft and like. Meanwhile, Randy's a literally a savage, just crazy, mm-hmm. and so they have this like whole thing. So then it's like a really big falling out. But then, of course, um, Elizabeth takes a break. Sherry comes in, but it's always, always, always the underlying. Where's Elizabeth? Where's mm-hmm. Elizabeth? Where's Elizabeth? And when she does come back, for some reason, I just have written Elizabeth beats Sherry's ass LMAO. Uh, yeah, I literally go, Elizabeth fights for her man. Uh, which, kind of iconic, which I think, oh, okay, I remember now. She's in the audience, right, mm. for the match. And it's, like, right. so dramatic, like, something, like, she he's getting, like, his ass handed to him or something, mm-hmm. and she, like, comes to his rescue. Right, and, and he does everyone... this, like, whole impassioned speech. He's just like, oh, I love, I love you, Elizabeth. Like, and then he's like, and then he asks her to marry him on the spot. Um, the the, this the drama, the drama mm -hmm. of this is crazy. I was literally watching this on the edge of my seat. Her in the audience, just like, like (gasps) looking, like, oh my, what do I do? Because everyone's been asking for her, and she's like, it's this dilemma where you're like literally the i can feel like the tension in the audience where it's Mm -hmm. like we hate the way randy savage treats her but we love her so much and we want are they like just meant to be together as toxic as it is are they just like meant to be together so when she like runs in and she 
beats up Sherry, everyone is losing, losing it. it. And when he yeah. proposes to her, losing it. There literally, I think Jake the Snake said there were grown men in the audience crying. crying. Maybe it was Bruce. But either way, someone's like, there were literally grown men, women, everyone crying, tears. Mm-hmm. Like it was like the reunion of the century. It was so well done. So well done. Yeah, and then they this, do like the like a a, a wedding. They uh, seven years after the fact that they were already married, they got married. Their characters got married on screen uh, in the ring, which is They're again all... another thing that had like another like thing that they are like the mold for because it yes. happens. It's a reoccurring thing that happens in the WWE. Because I've seen clips of it happening in other mm-hmm. times, like and then people interrupt or right, like, yeah, like yeah. it's there, like a there's whole never thing. a successful wedding at the in the WWE. Which is so funny. But like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, dude, and they were like, she I think Linda said it. They were like, she then they played it up. Her promos were like about like picking gowns mm-hmm. and like colors and flowers. Like they they made it like a whole thing and then got married in the wrestling ring. I just like watching this, I I wish i could have watched a storyline in real time because the way this is like a soap opera i would have uh, died that's this is literally why i call wrestling the male soap opera like this it, is like i and like there is not one person that i have like made that like comparison where they haven't been like oh yeah uh, <laughs> like, it is because it's like who hates this person now which family is and it's, and it's so one? outlandish you know what i mean where it's like this this person got shot in a cave and then comes back as like a different actor but it's the same character but like Period. he had all this like crazy like facial reconstruction surgery and we're all just mm-hmm. supposed to like accept Pretend. it right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's yeah. so crazy i like but i the drama is just so good so good and then the next thing i have in my notes is the snake is the snake this is crazy this is insane and i i i don't know how ever they got away with this but i guess this this was like lending itself to the storyline that randy was like literally like really untrustworthy paranoid. like yeah. not untrustworthy paranoid he like really did not trust anybody he was possessive he was like really starting to like go and he was little... and he was that that's uh, again Absolutely. life imitating art like he was a paranoid man Yes. So like I get so Jake the snake who obviously is the the possessor of snakes. They were going to do this whole thing where the snake bites Randy, but like somehow which I I am not an animal science whatever. I have no idea how they did this. They said like the the snake was no longer venomous, but it was it was a venomous snake. Right. But they like, like somehow they... like got the venom out. Like I didn't know that was a thing. I thought they just Oh, I think yeah, I think that's a, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, had no idea so yeah. learn something new every day jake's like yeah but basically the the short version of this is that Randy was so paranoid that jake was actually going to let a a true venomous active snake. venomous snake bite him in the ring that he made jake make the snake bite jake first first before they had right. to pr- and, and literally he said randy just sat there and was like don't drink anything don't touch anything don't you move he literally said he watched jake's the snake said randy watched him for a half hour yeah like, and he's just him like get how bit. do you feel and he's like pretty pissed off now like <laughs> and he said so i gave him his receipt and i made that snake pissed oh off yeah he said before he I... paintbrushed the back of the snake before he got like took it out of the bag and the the snake was like ready like Boiled, and what? And this snake got all. Oh, it got a good that day, girl. That, like he was not letting go for anything. That snake nope. was attached. Yeah, and Jake was like, people were telling me, like, get the snake off. Like, the bit is done. Like, it's over. And Jake was like, no, I know, I literally can't get it off. Like, right. I cannot. And even a non-poisonous snake, the fangs. The fangs are like this long. Mm -hmm. They're like an inch long. Right. Wrestling is crazy. This is so crazy. He was like, yeah, let's just have Randy get bitten by a snake and like to just like sensationalize the feud between Jake the Snake and Randy Savage. Just so crazy. And then after that, um, Jake the Snake slaps Elizabeth on camera. Yeah. I thought this was crazy. I thought... Though I will say Elizabeth's family, I wish that they had um interviewed her family more. Mm-hmm. But they this was like so funny. Jake the Snake said that when he slapped Elizabeth on camera, they ref- her family was so mad, they refused to let Randy in their house until he got 
his comeuppance on Jake gotcha. the Snake because yeah, yeah, yeah. they they said that um he Randy was in charge of protecting her when he took her to the WWE he made them a promise that he would protect her and they said in watching their daughter get slapped on television was not okay and he was not allowed back in the house right. and so Randy got his revenge on Jake mm-hmm. which I love the energy right I love the energy mm-hmm. don't come in my house don't come no, in my no, house no. I don't care if it's a part of the the thing. Don't you let some other man slap my daughter and then right. try and come into my house? Absolutely not. Love that. Absolutely. Love, love that. the energy. Love the energy. Uh, but it is, it is, that's kind of dark. Like Jake just slapping mm-hmm. Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. So, so the next thing I have is kind of, we flash forward a little bit after they've kind of, their on screen kind of reconciliation. It has kind of gotten to the point where, Elizabeth has had like enough of Randy kind of always being so controlling and always yeah. just needing to know where she is, not allowing her to do certain things, whatever. So she goes to visit uh, Linda in, in Florida Miami. at the time. And she, they like, basically she reasons it being like, Oh, like I just want to go like help her with like with the kids and like hang out and like, just relax, you know, go enjoy like the weather. Mm-hmm. Um and Macho Man having already had a prior relationship with Linda and Hulk was like, all right, and like as long as you're gonna be like with Linda, then like sure. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, if you want to take away what happens from here, it's uh well what's crazy too is that like you saying like after their reconciliation, it's actually like really bad. And I forget who said it, but it's like someone at like the producer or somebody was like, what was the status of their relationship when they got married on screen? And someone said it was the worst it ever was. Like they were right. this close to to An separating yeah. while they were literally getting married. Getting married. On screen. So it obviously only like we said escalates from there it gets worse and worse she flies down to miami and i this was confusing she she was supposed to stay with linda but then she tells linda she met a man mm-hmm. who she's gonna stay at his place or right. like in a room Whatever. in his place or in a in a condo next to somewhere she's gonna stay with him and she's not answering the phone she's kind of like disappeared Like, Linda knows she's in the vicinity, but not really, she doesn't really know who this man is or whatever. And so Randy starts calling their house and is like, where's my wife? Like, what is this? Like, and and Linda, again, girl code, girl Mm -hmm. code is like, she's just not here. And she was like, I didn't say where she was. I didn't say what she was Mm -hmm. doing, even though I knew. She she was not here. She's not here. She's just not here. I don't. And so she goes, of course, Randy shows up because he's crazy he gets mm-hmm. on the next flight she goes he was literally there within four hours of getting right. off the phone and like he shows up and he flips out because right. she's not there right doesn't know where she is eventually literally i guess he goes she says something like he goes door to door basically to, and finds her right and then there hulk is hulk goes to find her with randy finds her hulk comes back without randy and is like they're working it out. I don't know. I'm not getting involved anymore. Right. And so Linda's like, I have no idea what happened. But after that, I think it was, she said like a few weeks later, Linda called her and was like, I left Randy. Yeah. And she was just like, I'm, uh, yeah. She was so, like at a gas station. She's like, sound like she was at a gas station. She was on a pay phone, like whatever number. Right. She was like, I left Randy. And that was that. Right. She had finally, like she had reached her. Her limit. Her limit. Yeah. And then I think Bruce, it goes to Bruce talking about how he was, it was like after whatever episode and he was just like waiting in the car to go back to the hotel to get like shuttled back to the hotel or something. And they're waiting for Vince and Vince comes down out to the car and he gets in and he goes, just so you guys know, uh, Randy Savage is now the proud uh, property of WCW. Yeah. And And that was like, what? And that was a lot of Vince's doing in that, uh, this was when we kind of shift from like the, what's called like the golden era into uh, like uh, Bret Hart's era. Okay. Uh, that whole thing where they were trying to sh- go towards like younger stars. So that's like your Bret Hart, your Razor Ramon, your Diesel, Diesel, Yokozuna, like Owen Hart, like all of these people were like now coming in. But Vince was kind of taking the stars from the older kind of generation um, and kind of using them in a in a less prominent capacity. So the Macho Man was really being relegated to like commentary a lot. Mm. Um, and he believed like he could still go. 
Like there, he didn't really feel like that was a right for him. Like he could contribute in the ring still. Um, and so once Hulk made the jump to the WCW, it was like it because of who Hulk was at that time, like he was the first wrestler to like transcend wrestling. People mm-hmm. like if you knew nothing about wrestling and you were asked about wrestling, you go, oh yeah, that thing Hulk Hogan does. Yes. Like, and it's like, so true. and so like, he was the first one that like transcended like out of like wrestling into like movies, into television shows. He was friends with like Mr. T. Like mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. was like, uh, he was, because he was such a prominent person and he was like the first one to really like make that jump. It like just opened the floodgates for everybody. Uh, Mm -hmm. because they saw, they were like, oh, like if I'm not being utilized here, there's actually another place I can go work and actually make money. Uh, because now there was another national company. So like once that happened, uh, Randy made his way over because he was like, I'm, I'm not an announcer. Like, yeah, he's good on like, he's good on the mic, but like, I I can do more. Uh, so, uh, that was kind of vince is doing really well yeah there was an earlier quote from linda in this where she said vince was trying to take the wwe to a whole different place and none of us knew what was going on like decisions were just made out of the blue and we were just like it was it that was that like we had no idea what direction it was going he kept everything like really under wraps like right. Very all i knew is the that there were yeah. there were plans in place that none of us knew anything about and i thought that was really interesting and telling about literally everything the gen- oh, the whole genesis of wwe so right. and but y- the most like interesting thing is randy goes to like wcw and still girl is he's in the middle of divorcing this woman and still goes out of his way to vouch for her to get her a job there and not just like Crazy. a job like a very well paid job there yep. uh which is like you 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 are down bad if down. you are in the middle of a divorce and you're like let me actively take the woman that's divorcing me and continue to work with her i literally like, just got chills it's it really is crazy and we'll get to the when we get to the end like i definitely want to talk about more about that but like i would i wish i knew like there was more insight on like his thought process with that because it really no one really says anything other than like he just really cared for her like he just really loved her and wanted like, to make sure she was taken care of wanted to make sure she was taken care of which is so crazy and again it's like that mirror of like tammy and chris where it's like sir and right. not that elizabeth is necessarily is not the villain in this scenario in any Capacity, way right. but it's just like what a crazy thing to be like so enamored with somebody and like um when she does come to the wcw because she does she yeah. takes the offer um, she ends up being the villain and like Randy Savage is the is, baby face. Right. Because he had uh, at this point, um, the the thing that happens with villains is like if you are a like good enough villain for long enough, they just like you. You just become the you just become the one that they like because they respect you so much for all of the work that you have done. So at that point in his career. He has he has such had such a legendary career that when he went to WCW, he just kind of like went in as like a beloved legend. Crazy. And she came in as kind of like got to like play up that like villain side because mm-hmm. they were taking like very much like the backstage turmoil or like their real life turmoil and putting it very publicly, and that's mm-hmm. what made her the villain in that scenario um, because wild. she was having an Yay. ongoing affair Girl. with another wrestler in WCW, Lex Luger. Um, while Lex Luger was married to somebody else with children. With children. He, Lex Luger, kept her in a condo in the same neighborhood as him in the same and his complex family. in, in the, the same, same complex complex as him and his family that pay, paid he paid for it same 
complex. So that he could so, just w- take a little walk around the block. That is crazy. That is crazy. crazy. So like this and how this got so twisted and like turned around, I still don't even know. Like drugs. Literally they they d- girl drugs. They they come into the WWE as like the beauty and the beast and somehow now like she's having an affair with a married man who has kids, but she's still her ex-husband's manager after he got her the job. It's like it's crazy. It like is how do so you twist. how do you go to work every day and just like not break down? I don't know. Girl. I like I couldn't keep all of that like but, straight. Are you kidding me? Especially with her husband being who or her ex-husband being who he is, like and I guess like he just like didn't say anything about it because I guess Linda or she confided in Linda like I'm seeing somebody and it's Lex and Linda was like that's a bad idea like straight up she was like I told her like that's bad that is no 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 she's like that's bad and then she told her where she was living she's like that's worse worse whereas I love Linda so much but it is interesting bringing up the pills when they show her at WCW I was like this she's on drugs you can tell you can always tell I was like I just feel mm-hmm. like she's on drugs, which is shocking because she she just had that air of like just that would never touch her. But like, obviously it did. Mm-hmm. So and then like shortly after that, they're like, and it turns out she was she and Lex were doing tons of drugs. Her right. her condo was basically like an opium den and they were just doing drugs, drinking, like who even knows? Like and there was a, one point where it apparently got like physical between the two and she had like two black eyes like from lex luger and Mm -mm. then it cuts to this just like absolutely like alarming 911 call killing which is lex luger essentially finding elizabeth like mid overdose and like her passing they were sitting on the couch together right they were sitting on the couch together they were doing drugs and he said she just stopped breathing she just like gurgled, stop breathing. This nine one one call. If you guys have not seen this episode, like you you have to see that. The, and because it's just chilling, it's right. they just play the nine one one call, and mm-hmm. it's like him. And if you think about it, if you just visualize Lex Luger, who is huge, huge, this is... humongous man, and he is in pieces because he's like, I, I don't think she's breathing. He was so scared to even check her. The 911 woman he's was like, like, you need to send somebody. Like, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, you need to send somebody who like can, knows what's going on. Like, I I like, you know what I mean? Like, she's not breathing. Like, I don't see her chest. Like, and, and like the guy, or, like the, the operator on the other line's like, I need you to like get down on the floor and like look at her chest. Is it rising? rising like, and- is it falling? Like, and they, they were just like, he was just like, probably having like a panic attack or whatever uh because i like what do you do like what do you do right like that's got to be so scary um i yeah and it's it's so harrowing because he literally is like he's so scared and to check her even that she's breathing because he doesn't know i will say this i want to give him a lot of credit because like there are people who are in that scenario where they're surrounded by drugs surrounded by alcohol they're like definitely engaging in illegal activities and are afraid to call anybody right. when their friends or their loved ones like i mean I, are I, in I a crisis it helps that you have the resources that they probably oh, had at that time um, yeah, absolutely but still but still so the paramedics come and i don't remember if she's even taken in the hospital i do not know but either way she I think dies. she's pronounced dead there. Like, and uh, what you call it? Luger gets arrested. Arrested for all. all he of, said he he said he thinks he had like twenty seven charges like against right. him. Um, that's that too. That that uh whole thing was interesting too because I don't remember who has the podcast. Maybe someone was like, oh, maybe it was Jimmy. Somebody has a wrestling podcast. Jimmy Hart maybe has a podcast and had was like really hesitant to bring. Oh, Eric Bischoff. Thank you. Um, Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff. And he... Who was, in this in this scenario, was their boss yes. at WCW. Right. And he said he was, like, really hesitant to bring Lex on the podcast to talk about this. He goes, because it, like, it really... He was upset with, like, he was just, like, 
he was just pissed at Lex for, yeah. you know, for a long time. And like, he was like, I didn't want to like have him on because I was just like, I was done with him. Um, but, but then he like goes to like, to like kind of turn around. He's like, I gained a lot of respect for him that day in the way that he like, took responsibility for right. everything and like was very honest and very like vulnerable about it um which is you you can only get to that place like having really like gone through it you know what i Absolutely. mean uh to, to like because you either get to that place or it destroys you like realistically so because true. something like that like does not leave your life untouched Absolutely. so it, it was either like he was gonna like find a path where he was like i really messed up i have to take responsibility for this like i th these are the mistakes i made and like there's nothing i can do about it now but this is where i'm at or he could have gone on the path where just like he spiraled up, and you, like joined her end up dead yep right it's really so true and i i should have looked this up i wonder if he's still with his wife uh lex yeah he's passed he's passed since I, okay so interesting yeah so crazy but yeah so unfortunately she's dead at actually 42. I don't, hold on i could have just lied to you i'm <gasps> got me grieving over somebody might not even be dead hold on i don't know i could uh i thought he passed oh no he's still kicking let me find <laughs> he's 65 it's not even that old. No, but he did a lot of drugs. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> well, obviously. Well, I want to see if he's um still married. I'm curious if the wife stood by. They were man. together from 1999 to 2003. Okay, so no. I mean, I don't know how you say it. I find out you're having an affair with a woman and you killed her. Oh uh, <gasps> no, he's he got divorced in 2003. My imagination is running wild in that she probably found out about all of this when he got arrested for... That's what I'm saying. Like... How crazy. Yeah. Because finding... Oh, God. Girl, you where imagine... is her, not where only, her confession? Not oh. only, like, finding out your husband is cheating. Finding out your husband is cheating around the Over corner there. <laughs> with somebody he works with like and they're doing buttloads of drugs and then he like was present for her over like overdose and then gets arrested on like 27 counts of whatever and like that's how you find out that your husband is cheating on you and meanwhile you're at home raising the kids because he's always on the road Stop. the road around the corner where was her confessional Yo, Girl, she probably wanted to, nothing to do with that. No, she was like, canceled. Cancel, cancel, throw away. Do not call me ever again. Oh, uh, God. I would love to know. That's amen. crazy. <gasps> so Ugh, that, what that is how the, like, incomparable Miss Elizabeth, like, made her what a sin. end. And what a uh, sin. we should just wrap up Randy. Kind of what happens the rest I, of his career is, like, but, he kind of just, like, he finishes out his wrestling career like for the most part he um he apparently gets very involved in like the special olympics mm -hmm. he um stars in spider-man during this time uh mm. yeah yeah so he just yeah he just finished his career really like i i have to say i'm really shocked by his lack of reaction to her dying like they interviewed him and he was like i hadn't spoken to her in like six or seven years at this point by the time she dies which i did not yeah no but he was just like so you know i i'm really just upset for her family like it was weird to me yeah but i, I also think it's like i think you have there is a certain level of distance you're gonna put up between like an interviewer asking you like a question and mm. probably how you actually feel about the situation. I think, yeah, I think true. at that point in his life, he was probably like, I need to be like, I need to give a professional answer to this. Mm. Uh, and I don't think like that necessarily is a reflection of how he felt, but, this is that, true. but he also, at, by that point, like he got remarried so like yeah he well it's actually he no, remarries no he got, seven he years after later. her death yeah, yeah. yeah so, seven years after her death 
Um, and then I said, yeah, to devotes most of his time to the Special Olympics. But yeah, I was like shocked because uh, just from somebody who literally like even like we said, like was going actively going through a divorce and like still wanted to bring her into the fold and like really, truly, it seemed like cared so much about her. And again, that's his professional response. And also the interview seemed like it took him off guard. He was like standing on a lawn. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like someone just caught him out of the blue. So we never really know, at least based on this episode, how he truly felt about her passing because horrible horrible tragedy again this really give, gives chris candido and in, in kind of a way where he dies in a car crash yeah and his he has wife, a heart accident yeah he, a, his, a heart attack and then his, into a car accident which Sorry. insane so he and his wife are in a in the car so driving in florida i think and like he has a heart attack behind the wheel crashes the car i think she survives but mm -hmm. he dies right which is horrible yeah. yeah what a way to go like that is heinous yep i yeah it's just like a, a like such a like ugh, way to you know what i mean for such again, a guy for such a man like i just these tragic love stories man like they're just like so how harrowing I, like how does how does like one couple go through so much swear like i just to I just, I don't even know. Like, to think, like, at one point, it's like, okay, like, I've done my wrestling career. I'm done. I'm just living out my retirement. Just blah, blah, blah. Like, whatever. Just hanging out with my wife, going for a Sunday drive, girl. Mm hmm Heart attack, car crash, killed. I know. Devastating. Mm hmm Devastating. And that is the tragic story of the Randy Macho Man Savage and Miss Elizabeth, the first lady of the WWE. Yeah. How insane, you guys. How like, insane. I know. Absolutely. Like, I breakneck. Like, like, yeah. I mean, it's just the lives of these wrestlers really is. I'm so glad they ended up doing this series when they did because I Vice. just swear. Thank Vice, honestly, shout out for everything. They do the best, the best mm -hmm. shows. Um, and I think these stories are so important to talk about because it's like, these are people that like we watch every single day. They're doing the most insane stuff with their bodies, their, like their families. And like, it just, takes a toll. Like it, it does. Like it is not a, like, it's not a, a, a business you get into lightly because it is like when you're committing to that, like you're removing yourself from your family for months at a time. You're like putting yourself in situations where you're like prone to, that lifestyle, you know, that whole the rock and roll, you know, totally crashing hotel rooms, doing drugs, lots of things available to you. Like it's it's a it can be a very like tumultuous life and was for a lot of people. So, yeah, I mean, they have a whole series, whole series about whole series. all of it. Yeah. So that that is this edition of Nunu, the sorry. <laughs> Hello. That, is, that is this week's edition of the new to wrestling after dark podcast we hope you guys enjoyed this insane roller coaster ride and oh, i am amen. so excited to get into whatever we get into next xavier kind of like reveals it to me as the week goes on mm -hmm, and then we get mm -hmm. to dive in i have and a yeah i have a like a in, i have a couple episodes that i want to do but i'm not i just want to time them well i guess i appreciate your work i really really do yeah, yeah, yeah um yeah, yeah. so this episode will air after our uh pay-per-view episode yeah. yeah our our thursday uh pay-per-view episode of the fatal four-way which was insane absolutely so if you guys bonkers. haven't listened to that episode please do which also um we did get another comment on our last um video from this series from somebody named Jason from Central New Jersey, which, by the way, Jason, we are Jersey girls, just so yes, you know. Yes, if we yes, didn't yes, ever yes. say that. Xavier currently lives in the Philly area, but mm -hmm. we are Jersey girls. Um, and commented a really amazing comment uh, talking about his uh, relationship with wrestling, how um, his daughter, who is now 16, is into wrestling since she was nine. Mm -hmm. um, and potentially maybe we'll watch this show together my uh our unsolicited advice not that you need any is that i would also get into our other podcast because we're and watch the attitude era together alongside us like let's like you know right all right, right. together hold hands and go through it because i'm seeing it for the first time and if she would be seeing it for the first time it'd be something like really engaging and interesting to discuss and i know she's you mentioned she's into female
female wrestlers. You can, you know, enjoy the genesis of female wrestling in the WWE together, which we will eventually cover on this Definitely. podcast or the other podcast, which I'm so excited about. And I believe he made like, uh, no, just because uh, he said his daughter was like, I guess, younger or like just because we get into more ex kind of uh, explicit topics on this show. Yeah. On that show, we are literally, we watch an episode of Raw or a pay-per-view and then we just discuss what happens. It is, it is, we don't really Way get into PG. the tumultuous uh, lifestyles uh, so much as just kind of reviewing what's been presented in front of us and just kind of being silly and ridiculous about it. Uh, yeah. So if that is a concern, um, Anything, any episode that says After Dark is going to be more adult in its uh, nature and content. Uh, but any episode that is uh, just a, a straight up new to wrestling podcast is just Kelsey enjoying some wrestling for the first time uh, while I rewatch some wrestling and uh, just share my love for it while yeah. budding a new one you know which you know you guys can mirror if you decide to watch us there like you know exactly and we'd love exactly. to hear about it we'd absolutely about it. and obviously of course we you know you guys can watch this too just it's a little bit more rated r as opposed to pg slash pg 13 like the other right. the right, other right, right, podcast right. but thank you so much for commenting i like your story, everything you shared was so sweet and we're so grateful for everything you said and we hope that you guys enjoy all right, and we will catch you on Thursday for another episode of the New to Wrestling Podcast and next Saturday for a, another episode of the New to Wrestling Podcast after dark. We will see you there. Bye. Bye.